I remember being in Milan and hearing that it had sort of made its way there when all of us were there for Fashion Week. And I remember everyone trying to get out. Everyone was trying to escape the city. And there were still shows going on, of course, and there's so many people around you, and it's such an enclosed space that if one of us were to get it, we'd probably all contract it. And I just remember scrambling to try and get a flight to Paris. Little did we know how it would follow us to Paris and then, you know, to the world. It was such a surreal time because we have obviously have never experienced something like this before and we had no idea what it meant for our jobs, for where we were living and, and we had no real gauge of, of how long this was gonna last and so it was a big time of, of unknowns I think for everyone. I was shocked but I don't think I was angry or sad because I was only concerned about the health of my family in Wuhan, which is where the virus was said to be originated. I was worried about Asian discrimination and racism growing. I was more concerned about that than my career, I think. Work is my whole life. I, I, I'm not really sure what I did before <laughs> I was working like this. It feels like you're running to catch up, like you want to constantly be involved or else if you're not, then you're irrelevant. And I was nervous of that. I was like nervous of not booking jobs if I took a break to focus on myself. And I don't like how that's sometimes a reality in the industry. The fear of the unknown that happened with COVID and how it unraveled, I think put everyone at unease and mental health became such a, it just came into the center of the picture for me. It really took a lot of out of me to be able to stop and look at myself again in the mirror I didn't know who I was. I based everything off of my job and the people around me that once I had to really sit with myself, I realized how much work I had to do internally. I realized that my, my traumas from when I was young actually affected me more now in this career because of, I was so insecure and already hated myself coming into this business. And then you get broken down to a point where you don't feel like your opinion matters or what you say you know, means anything to anybody. You know, I've been modeling now for 10 years. I've been traveling and working very aggressively. And um, when I had slowed down because of the pandemic, it was like I had to sit there with my own thoughts and I had to figure out all these things that I'd been pushing down or just not addressing. And I seeked help. Um, I seeked men like um, therapy and counseling, and I've been taking the time out of my life to make that a priority since. I want to say like, oh yeah, I use this pandemic to like write the next great American novel or like make a bunch of oil paintings or something. But like, I don't know. I think a lot of it was like me being depressed. Like, some days, if I pulled myself out of bed. Like, that was a huge accomplishment for me. This is something I don't really speak about a lot, but I was waking up every morning, especially before work, in tears. And I would go to work, you know, put a smile on my face. So by the time I would get home, I would be so drained. That for me was something I had to learn over quarantine was, you know, boundaries, being able to say no, which I never knew was a possibility. No matter what your plans are, no matter how many jobs you have booked already or on the horizon, it's about your health and being safe and keeping others safe. And that was something that I think a lot of people weren't used to, that the pandemic forced everyone to kind of deal with and sit in. I'm lucky enough to be vaccinated. I feel really safe. I want to keep my family safe. I want to keep the people that I'm working with safe. I want to keep their families safe. I think it is starting to change. I think that models 
are having longer careers of more meaning and more substance. But I think there is always that mentality and sort of that frenzy when you first start out and you feel like you need to please everyone, you need to take every single job. The pandemic obviously, although it hindered um, a lot of us um, with work, I think it's been good for the industry moving forward, I think, um, because it, everything feels a bit more real and human now. I think that this year made us all realize that we need to take ownership back of our lives and understand that it is a job, but we can also you know, have our personal lives too, which I don't think a lot of us really understand or understood. The level at which we push ourselves probably is going to fall a little bit shorter because I think we're all a little bit more aware of what we can handle in our own mental health and that's really important. I feel the pandemic has changed so every like every aspect of everybody's life. Like for me, I've just been more aware of who I have around me and the kind of energy I keep around me and what I do that's worth my time. There were a lot of like at home Zoom photo shoots going on and it was so hard. <laughs> That's when I really also realized, like, I really appreciate everyone that is a part of the production of what we do. We're talking light, we're talking makeup, hair, the assistants, producers, production. I bow to them all in the sense of knowing how everyone is so important. They made it look so easy that we took it for granted until now. It's not just us, you know, we do it with a team of so many people that just are so hardworking, so wonderful, so artistic, so creative, and we make projects together. That's what this is, you know? And so I feel like that's why we all try to work our butts off to be able to be the best that we can be because we want to prove to ourselves and to everybody that, you know, this really is a passion, it's, a, it's art. And that's when I look at it and I'm proud to do what I do.